between fathers and sons, between God or Father and Adam, between Adam and Cain, between Noah and Japheth, who is one of his three sons. Um, and so it's, to give the play some real kind of shape to it, it the first, the, the relationship between father and Adam is pretty good, but Adam decides to leave him for Eve the relationship between Adam and Cain is pretty bad, um, to the point that Cain kills his brother and his, the, all of his generations of family are condemned to be, you know, uh, bad people. Um, and then finally, between Noah and Japheth, we're able to get some understanding of the father actually accepting the son and letting the son grow and, and expand on their own. So that's kind of the shape that uh, John Caird and Stephen Schwartz have given this biblical story. Um, so those are the stories that are basically being told. It's a huge play. I mean, obviously, we have to you know, 
produce on stage, the creation of the world, um, <laughs> the loading of the ark, the flood. Um, so obviously there's going to be some theatricality involved because we are not funny on flooding of the orchestra bit. Um, I know. It is, we are doing it with what is called a unit set. Um, for those of you who don't know what a unit set is, a unit set means that you have one big monster set that doesn't move a whole lot, okay? It doesn't come on and off. You don't close the curtains and change your flats and move, you know, from New York City to Yonkers and back, and, you know, to the, to the restaurants and all of those type of things. Pretty much you have one big set that becomes eaten that becomes the wasteland that Adam and Eve are left in, and then becomes the place where Noah is building the ark, and becomes the area where the, uh, the becomes the ark, okay, and then finally it becomes the ground in which the, the ground has come back, and the rainbow goes across the stage, and people leave. Um, they go off to populate the world, okay? Uh, Lots of population here, okay? <laughs> Lots of begetting people. Okay, our set. The major function of our set is a turntable. And we hope to get it as soon as possible because a rake is a bitch to act on. Okay? Because it will be essentially about that much of an angle. Okay? Which means you don't drop your props. Okay? Because they roll off into the orchestra. Um, it also means that any furniture that we build to be on this rake will have to have short legs in the back and long legs in the front so that it sits flat, okay? Um, so that is our central thing here. The circle is not an accident, okay? The play is very circular, okay? It's about history repeating itself again and again and again. You will see the circle will come into the design of the initial set. It will come into the design of the tree. It is reflected in the arc. Um, it's reflected in the sun or the moon that is almost constantly dominating the back of the, of the stage. So the circles are, are throughout the whole play. The tree essentially comes down from here. If this all sounds like it's going to be really tough to do, it will. The entire cast of the play in the first act is in white. Um, this signifies the innocence of Eden. And then the first time that any of the white is shifted is when Eve eats out of the apple and the, the juice from the apple drips red all over the front of her, sort of getting you over the head with her having been stained with sin of Eve's apple. From that point forward, Adam and Eve, and then Cain and Abel are then in darker colors. So this is the central concept behind the animals, is that we're going to make um, at least, the amount of animals is going to be determined by the amount of these that we get to make, that we're able to make. Um, this is, as you can see, it fits very easily over a head. I believe they're silver. Or they're silver or gold, and they will be decorated with white flowers. So it's very, it's very um, representational. Oh, the snake's really cool, though. It's got the idea now. The concept behind the snake now is that it's sort of like um, the costumes are somewhat Vegas-like. They are. They are. I think that the, 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 that the ladies are dressed. Somewhat like showgirls, but with like tail coats. <laughs> like, like, uh, it's kind of like a bot hat. Like, what? <laughs> and, and both the guys are like in the, in the, the tux, the, like the tails. And red, thick red, thick sequins. Okay? <laughs> I'm really excited, guys. It's going to be a great show. Um, Go, go, go over the door here. Come here, come here, come here. 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 Come here.
Go. Uh, I'm Abel. All right. Uno. Well, how would you feel when you mess. found out you made the cast? <laughs> I, I, I was, I was proud. Oh, there's a man, Troy Rappaport. Look, right here. Yes! He's, he's gone. Children, he's eat it. Sweet. Okay. Well, now I'm playing the garden. I'm, I'm an angel. angel. I'm an angel. No, no, no. Rock three. Rock three. <laughs> for the production of Children of Eden. And the only comment I would like to make about this production is that it is the most awesome in the magnitude and the scope of the work production that I have ever been involved with. There are four enormous choral numbers for the entire cast. There are small four or five part ensemble numbers. The storytellers are always singing with three and four part harmonizations. The families are always singing three and four part harmonizations. It is unlike any musical I have ever even seen in the magnitude of that work. And the fact that these young people have been able to pull it all together and to make sure that all those harmonies are there in every one of these numbers is just extraordinary. And I'm really very proud of their work. I am very, very proud of Tyler Paul's ability to pick notes out of the air and just be right there with his entrances. The orchestra, the orchestrations are meant to be accompaniment to the singers. They do not in very many ways help the singers. It's all about the total picture and so the orchestrations are designed to simply add to that total picture and not double parts that the singers are singing. So the work that the kids have done on this production of Children of Eden is by far the, the finest work that I have ever seen from students at this school. And the soloists, every soloist is a very, very talented young singer and actor, and I am just very, very impressed. I'm honored to be part of this group of people that collaborated to make this happen. Zegan's work on the stage was astounding. Roth's work with the actors is astounding. Joanne's con work with the dancers. It, it's just been wonderful. So I'm, I'm very happy to have been part of the show and happy that I could add my little bit of instruction to make it work. I'm good, how are you? Alright, are we doing a Yeah, we are. Yeah.
can walk on slowly, not draw attention to ourselves, not look at the audience. You're still on your side of the stage, but you're sort of getting ready for the play. It's really kind of walking along, maybe two at a time. You're talking to each other. You sit down, have to be going, you have a nice little chat. Um, let's see, if you stand here, it's going to look like you're so ready for the thing. So I think maybe, I mean, if two of you are standing here talking, maybe that would work. You're given the cue. I wanted to straddle on. You found about a minute and a half to get on stage with different people. So come out in different groups. Keep it happening, guys. You can do it. You've been given the cue. I mean, somebody should start. Gentil and I played Eve in Children of Eden. Um, well, I've been doing players since I was a freshman a couple years ago. I'm a junior. And this show was a really different experience because 
it required a lot of time commitment. Like generally, players is my life anyway. But like in the beginning, rehearsals were already kind of late because it was just an overwhelming show as far as music and because um, there's just so many choral numbers that we had to like rehearse four part harmonies all the time and it was nice being like in the show the entire time even though my character was only in the first act it was good to just like be in the background for those last parts because it's just such an ensemble feeling everyone's together working on the same songs and there's really there was less of a separation between like the ensemble and the, and the main characters it was definitely cool that it was a bible story and I, I liked that um, it's a little different from the stereotypes like most people see Eve in the bible as sort of the seductress the evil one who you know sort of introduces the devil to Adam but it was sort of it made it a little more innocent and more of a human quality to her because she's just interested and fascinated by the world and she has these choices open to her and um, she's not just this evil girl it was you know she was sort of justified in what she did, at least a little bit more than I thought. She's a curious person, so I thought that was cool, the way, the way we chose to portray her, me and the director and I and everyone who was involved with it. Yeah, basically Children of Eden was cool. It, it sort of gave life to the vibe. Hi, my name is Jacob Heimer, and I played Adam in Children of Eden, and uh, it was a pretty cool show. We did a lot of stuff in it. Um, I think my favorite aspect of the show was the storytellers, who basically told the story. Uh, they added a lot to the show because um, in most shows, the, the, the chorus doesn't get such a big chance to do that much, but I think the chorus people actually, uh, the storytellers actually had it harder than others because the music was so hard in this show. Um, and it was probably the most challenging show I've seen, at least choral-wise, uh, and they all really pulled it together, and Miss Lipson really nailed them on all the vocal parts. Um, that was very impressive. The set was also pretty cool. Uh, the turntable, and which I liked a lot. To spin it. Um, I'm Noah Whitkey, and um, I'm double casted for Avery. And you know, I just really like the show. I was really happy just to get it. It's a really fun experience and everyone's really cool and it's just a lot of fun. I'm not gonna lie, I really like the music. I think the music's really good. And you know, Mr. Roth is really creative creative with what he does. Um, like the snake, for example. It's, uh, yeah, I, I, th I think the snake is very creative. I also really like the, the, the tree. I mean, it's, it's, I don't know, it's such a good organization. It's just, that's fun. And it's just been a great experience being in theirs. And everyone's really nice and they're all really supportive. And you know, it's a great environment to be like, together on one big project and also they you really love just working together is such a like it's such a great experience and you just all about teamwork and it's been so much fun. Hello, um son son of Seth. Hi, my name's Adam and I'm the one and this is my show. Uh, my name's Kieran and I and I'm playing King. Hey, and I'm playing young Abel. Um,
also, right? My name is David Roth, and uh, I am the director of Staples Players and the theater teacher here at Staples, and I directed Children of Eden. I chose Children of Eden um, first because of the music. The first thing I knew of this show was I got the CD, and I really liked the music. Um, I really liked the choral music and um, and some of the some of the other songs in it. And then as I found out more about it, um, I discovered that it was a story that's that's told by the storytellers. And that everybody in the cast um, becomes a storyteller when they're uh, when they're not playing their individual part, and then they then they um, play their parts, and then they go back to being storytellers. And I really liked that concept. Concept. I really liked the ensemble feeling of the show. Stephen Schwartz came and visited us, and um, he was he was very helpful. I mean, it was great just to hear him talk. Um, but some of the things that I feel like he really emphasized um, was stuff that we had really figured out already, but he sort of reiterated it and made us realize how important it was, and that was that the entire story is, um, has to be father's through line, and that you need to see how father changes, um, how important the repetition of the different images in the play were. Um, and uh, so that really really helped us to appreciate um, what were the challenges of this particular piece. The music was incredibly challenging. Um, Mrs. Lipson had to work, you know, really overtime, and so did Mrs. Valovich. Um, and we had Ryan O'Neill helping and Lynn Riegler helping. Um, so that was a huge, huge difficulty. Um, most of the other difficulties we really anticipated. Um, having to do the animal heads, that type of stuff. Um, that um, we attacked early on. We knew it was going to be a huge challenge, and Mr. Zegan just um, blew us away with, with all of the animal heads. Um, and most of the set was a challenging set to build, but we knew it was going to be ahead of time, so I never really had any concern with it. Um, so there weren't a huge amount of difficulties. It took us longer to do this show, um, and we really weren't ready until the opening night. I guess some of my favorite stuff in the show um, was from the time that Eve sees the apple tree, um, really through to the point where um, Adam and Eve are expelled from the garden. Um, I felt that thematically and technically everything really kind of came together there. I loved, um, I loved the entrance of the color red into what had previously been a white play um, through the apples and then reiterated with the snake. Um, and I thought that that, that worked very well. Um, I love the snake number. I love the fact that John Carrot and Stephen Schwartz chose to, um, chose to make it a multi-person um, uh, animal. Um, and I really, um, I love that song. And sort of the whole development, uh, there were so many people involved in the process of, of coming up with how that number was going to work. Um, I really wanted the arms to look like snakes and that their arms would become the snakes when they wanted it to be. And then D. Alexander, our costume designer, said she really felt that it should go in a Las Vegas sort of way. So that got it in integrated into their costumes. And then Joanne Kahn really ran with that choreography. So it really took on that whole element. And then we were able to get the lights to flat, the, the apples to flash. And then I really liked the the visual of Eve being stained by the apple um, with the color red again. Um, and that was, I believe that was Carrie Long's idea to begin with. Um, and then I liked what, what the actors were able to do with the, um, with her change and sort of her, her um, the change in her sexuality, I think, in that scene. Um, and the way that she treats Adam from that point forward. And I feel like we really, there were so many different creative elements and I felt like we really made that our own and it really came together. I was very pleased with the outcome of the show. Um, 
I did not expect people to embrace it quite as much as they did. Um, uh, I don't know that we've had such an overwhelming response to a show. Um, um, people just seem to really, really love it and um, really like the material and our production of it. And I think that all, all the performers, all of the technicians, everybody just, just rose to the challenge of, of presenting this extremely epic show. And um, I felt like there wasn't really a weak link in the whole thing, and um, I'm really proud of everyone that, that had a part to do, that had a part in it. So um, I guess I was very pleased with the outcome.
<laughs> well, welcome everybody. Uh, we're all very excited to have Stephen Schwartz here. Uh, Sables Players actually has a pretty strong history of doing your shows. Um, <coughs> we've done Godspell at least three times. We took a production of Pippin um, to the Edinburgh Theatre Festival in Scotland about six years ago. And this year we are so excited about doing Children of Eden. Um, <coughs> and I just inhaled my water. Um, uh, so what, what I had is the kids wrote down the questions they were interested in, and I'm going to ask you some of those, and then we'll turn it over for a little bit of question and answer at the end. Um, the first question we have is that we noticed that you were a drama major at Carnegie Mellon, which we thought probably meant that you're on the acting side of it. Is that true? Or I was a directing major. You were a directing major. What sort of made you switch to composing, or were you always doing both at the same time? How, what is your history in composing and directing? You know, I, I've done a lot of, uh, uh, I've taken a lot of <coughs> music classes before college, um, and from a pretty early age, because I grew up um, pretty proximate to New York City, and my parents were theater goers, and I'd gone to see um, theater in uh, 